Welcome to the hottest real estate topics on the planet, keeping you up to date with all the creative ways to buy and sell real estate without bank qualifying, so anyone can build real income starting today. Here is another great show with Dealmaker Bill and Pete the Rookie. All right, here we are at another episode of Flipping Houses for Rookies. Oh my God. We had a little bit of a challenge getting here today, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a, you know, it's a challenge for everybody right now. The electronic stuff. So we're on episode number 195, which the name of this podcast is Since We Can't All Win the Lottery, Use Your Marketing Strategies to Find Hot Creative Deals. Ah, the okay. secret, the secret that doubled, almost tripled my real estate career in about four months was figuring out how to find hot, hot, hot sellers that would be willing to accept creative offers that had hardly any money from me involved in the deal. These crackerjack strategies soon exploded the amount of deals I was seeing and offers I was making. I soon realized the most important tool in my toolbox was not my education on real estate deal structuring, like so many people think it, think it is, but instead who I was talking to when I made my offers. As an example, if I was talking, as an example, it was the difference between talking to someone and trying to convince them to use a parachute when they were standing on the ground. Instead of talking to them when they were 4,000 feet up in the air, falling to the ground. And really needed one. Is that your point? Really needed one, yes. <laughs> I don't need no stinking parachute right now, buddy. Look, I'm right on the ground. What's the matter with you? Exactly. Yeah. And uh, it was it. a lot easier to convince him because he needed, the, he needed the help, right? Yeah. In this podcast, I'm going to cover my 18 years and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars experienced in finding and marketing and finding hot deals for creative real estate investors. And if you really want to change your life with real estate profits, this episode could be your new essential checklist for success. Okay. So here we go. Yep. All right. So this is another one of those podcasts, Peter, where, uh, the listener is going to have to listen and probably rewind quite a bit and uh, probably take notes mm. because I'm going to kind of go into some things. Uh, truth is uh, most listeners are going to get a real treat today. And here's the reason why this podcast is actually, I'm actually, I've actually written this podcast and we're actually doing this podcast and it's slanted heavily towards my coaching clients. See, what happens is, is uh, a few of them need help, right, with deal hunting. Right. See, in my private coaching group, what we do is uh, the main purpose of the coaching group, though we do many other things, the main purpose of the coaching group is, is you bring deals to the, to the call, right? We have a call every Monday night. Yeah. And you bring deals to the call, and we help you structure those deals. So when you leave the call, you have three offers – that you can go give your seller and make a deal. Right. right. Well, that way you know that one of those deals should work well, if not all three, at least one of them would be a sensible deal, kind of safe, kind of smart. Plus you don't know, you don't know what the seller is going to say. So you want to have another one in your back pocket. Right. So if, if the seller says no way, I'm going to take, you know, 40 cents or 60 cents or 70 cents and a dollar, you say, okay, how about this? Mm. <clears throat> and you have another offer. Right. right. <clears throat> so that's the point of the, the coaching calls. So I have a few coaching clients 
that aren't bringing deals to the call. Mm. So I had a choice to make. Do I get on the phone with each one of them and I spend an hour, you know, because there's a couple of them, I spend an hour, hour and a half with them? Do I make a video and say, okay, here's what I want you to do? Or my thought was, we just do it on the podcast and then tell them to go listen to the podcast. Now, a lot of times what happens is, is most guys would be worried about the amount of, the amount of information we're going to give you today is technically paid information. It's technically coaching information. Um, mm -hmm. But I realized if I help other people find deals, maybe they'll call me and become coaching clients too. Not bad. So here we go. I mean, I could be totally wrong, but I'm just going to spill my guts. Okay. Sure. <clears throat> so basically uh, what you got to realize is, is on the coaching call, uh, I'm, I'm like a, a safety net. So I just want to make sure people get that. Right. So if they get in trouble, I kind of like get them out of trouble. So the, so the object is, is that they uh, go out, find deals, they bring them to me. I help them structure them. And if they screw it up or do something wrong, I'm the safety net and I get them out of trouble. Okay. Well, so in other words, you're helping people with the one thing that stops most everything fear. Yeah. It's totally correct. Yeah. Right. All right. So let's get started. So by now you should uh, already know about my seven deal strategies. Okay. If you don't know them by episode number 195, uh, I don't know what to say. You probably should go back and listen to a few episodes, but just in case you're brand new and you never heard them, let me run through them. Okay. Yeah. So, what we have is seven deal strategies. I start at the top as a scale and I work my way down. Okay, so the, <coughs> oh my goodness. <coughs> the first deal is a slot deal. That's a sandwich lease option transfer. Mm -hmm. That's where we do a lease option, but we don't stay in the deal and we make a fee for putting the deal together. The reason we, the reason we know what those deals are is usually that deal has a hundred percent loan to value ratio and no equity. We make our own equity. Right. Or you could have a free and clear owner that has a hundred percent equity and they're just not willing to come off their price. Mm -hmm. Right. A slot deal works either way. Right. The next one down is just a straight up option deal where it's much like a realtor and we just uh, sell the house. We get it. We get an option agreement or the rights to sell the house. And because we have the rights, uh, we don't need to have a license and we can go sell the house and we can make anything above what we promised to pay. So if we uh, sign an option for 150 and go sell it for 100, for 160, we make 60 grand at the closing. And we, we profit 10 and we profit like 10,000. That's right. And uh, that's a 10% or a 90% loan to value ratio and 10% equity or profit. Mm -hmm. Next one down is a rent to own or very often called the lease option. Uh, that's much like the slot deal, except we stay in the deal. We, we rent from our seller to own it and we, and we put a sub sub leaser or a tenant in there to, that does the same thing. The difference is between a slot deal and a rent to own is a rent to own. We stay in the deal when we have 15% equity and 25% cash flow. So that yeah. means we're making money now. We're making, because we make it to deposit, we get money monthly and we get money later. Mm -hmm. Right. So that yeah. we do when we have about 85% loan to value ratio and about 15% equity. Sure. Okay. Uh, the next one down is getting the deed uh, often known as subject to where you actually have the owner uh, give you the deed to the property and then you, um, they give you the deed to the property and the mortgage stays in their name. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's an 80% loan to value ratio and 20% equity. Next one down from that is a rehab retail. Uh, we're not going to talk about that much. Just go watch one of the cable channels and you can see how it's done. Their numbers lie, but you can see how it's done. Um, and uh, that's a 70% loan to value ratio and a 30% equity uh, share, okay? Right. 
And then wholesale is uh, wholesale is when you actually put a house under contract and you sell the contract and you just make a fee, usually five or $10,000. That's a 60% loan to value ratio with a 40% equity. And then the last one is owner financing. Owner financing is a 100% loan to value ratio. Uh, I'm sorry, 0% loan to value ratio and 100% equity. Right. Right. So here's what I want to talk about today. And I'm not sure how long we're going to go about this because it's kind of concise. There's not a lot of fluff in this. Uh, and the reason why is because I want guys to be able to listen to this, especially my coaching clients, be able to listen to this and get the thought process on how they're going to actually get deals. Like, like mm. the deals come to them mm. because they're talking to the right people. Okay. Right. So, uh, before I do the breakdown of the actual marketing, let me explain this. And uh, you have to realize, and you do, Pete, because we we uh, we know one another well. Um, my one of my weirdnesses in life, as a matter of fact, I just did it again. I just spent hun a few hundred dollars buying books on direct mail. You like that direct mail, don't you? Don't yeah. you? why I'm stuck with it. I actually think in my head that when I get old, <laughs> didn't say anything. Go ahead, Peter. Hey, I'm older than you. Hey, no, you are. Hey, <laughs> when I get older and I, and I have either my real estate business running by itself or an acquisition manager running it for me and all that, or I just close it, <coughs> then I'm going to do the direct mail business. I don't know why I think that, but it entices me. So I buy all these books. So, well, I don't know, Bill. I don't know. Sometimes I think your name might have been Sears or Roebuck in a past life. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I just hit this crazy idea. I don't know. <laughs> Sears, Roebuck. So I have to get a catalog then. <laughs> Something. Well, you, you update it. You update it to modern techniques. All right. You'll figure it out. So... The reason why I tell you this is because there are certain rules to successful campaigns. Mm. And if you, uh, and, when, and the books that I'm buying are old, they're out of print. So when I buy a book that's 300 bucks or 600 bucks or thousand dollars, it's because it was from a successful copywriter, maybe in the 20s or in the 30s or in the 50s or 70s or 80s. <coughs> the book is no longer in print. So I'm buying it because it can't be found. And sometimes it takes me a long time to find these books. And yeah. often I'll figure out who these authors are. Like I just stumbled across a new author, right? So I've been, that's why I bought a couple more books. Um, and I don't remember what his name is. It's in the other room because uh, I just started reading him. Uh, and, and, and it may sound like I'm babbling right now, but when you hear what this value brings to real estate, it's kind of crazy, Pete. It's like really kind of crazy. Because mm -hmm. I don't know of anybody other than maybe Ron LeGrand, because Ron LeGrand is a Dan Kennedy disciple. He, he, was, he, he was in his coaching groups and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, he might get the concept of this, but I don't know how many real guru type real estate guys are, are really savvy with marketing. Now you have to have that, as far as I'm concerned, the only way to become a real estate tycoon is with marketing. It's not the houses. It's not the money. It's not any of that. It's, it's, the mar it's, it's the marketing. Agreed. Well, yeah. You figure there's a lot of houses out there, properties, and there's a lot of people looking for them. Right. So what makes one person stand above the rest? It'd have to be the ability to get a hold of the right property. Exactly. I think you call that marketing, no? Exactly. So right. to sew all this up, my little rant here, uh, here here's, here's a, a statistic that I don't think we've ever talked about. 60%. Uh, okay, let's go back to Dan Kenny. Dan Kenny has a triangle. He calls it the three M's. Right. The message market, media. He says, you nail all those three <coughs> and you got, a, you got a winner. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. The air is like blowing on me. I don't know why. <clears throat> yeah. That terrible Florida. Air. Yeah. 
doing this outside next time. Mm -hmm. So he says if you get the three M's nailed in that triangle, you get a winner. Okay. Yeah. So let's take a look at that. So 60% of your marketing are the people you're talking to. I mean, to be successful, 60%, the emphasis is on finding the right people. So it's the exact person, hmm. right? It's the, it's so in cop in, uh, in mail, in the mail order business, they call it list segmentation. Hmm. So it's the list they buy that matches your product. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Like, let me give you an example. And this is a joke, so please don't take this serious. But I wouldn't buy a list of people that buy hamburgs and send it to California. <laughs> What's funny about that? That's true. <laughs> now, I might buy a list of people that, buy, that eat tofu and send it to California. Hey, I'm a cop. Stereotypical, but you get the difference. Yeah. <clears throat> or how about this one? Would I want to, uh, let me think of something. Would I want to sell like brand new iPhones to people that are 80 years old? No. Not, right? No. So if I have a list of people that are 80 years old, I mean, I, some of them would but not a vast majority of them, I'd probably be better off to send that list to a demographic of like maybe 25 year olds. So I've heard this in PR called like the right public as opposed to the wrong public. Is that the right idea? Like who's your public? Who's your yeah. people? Is that the idea? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's actually, it's actually your, I call it your congregation. Yeah. Right. Like you wouldn't walk into a Jewish congregation and start talking about Jesus Christ the way a Christian would. Right. It's just a different congregation. So congregation just simply means uh, not so much a church thing, but it's a group of people that are like-minded. People who congregate, get together. And the reason why they get together is because they all agree upon the same type of things. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Like I remember, when I first started, uh, one of the things that Ron Legrand told me was, is that people, and he says it's such, so, so hillbilly-ish, it's unbelievable. People that have like stuff in their yard, like boats and cars and stuff stacked up all over. Tires. Are, yeah, tires, yeah. Are usually not good with money. So those are good, those are good leads because they, they could be behind. So. If, if you had somebody that was behind in a tax bill and they had a house that looked like that, then that would be a good lead, mm -hmm. right? Physically putting it. So it's, it's, it's list segmentation. Okay. <clears throat> so who you're talking to with the message that you're delivering means everything. Now, so many, so many, so many business owners spend a lot of money on marketing and they don't like it, especially, you know, like the professions, like the lawyers and, you know, uh, chiropractors and dentists and stuff like that. I mean, I, I, I know a chiropractor, let me think, I can't remember what his name is. You know who he was, um, Singer. What was his first name? Dave Singer? Um, no, his last, name, his last name was singer. Right. And I remember watching him one time, uh, marketing to chiropractors <clears throat> and it was the most genius thing I think I've ever heard. Cause he would be anywhere, anywhere. And he'd walk up to you and say, hi, my name is, I think it's Dave singer. My name is Dave. Yeah. Right. And he'd put yeah. his hand out and he would shake your hand. Right. And the first thing he would say to you is say, how do you feel today? And they're like, what do you mean? Well, how do you feel today? And if they say, oh, I feel good, then guess what? He didn't stay there very long. He would chat with them for a few couple of minutes. And, but if he didn't, they would be like, ah, oh, I'm a little tired. Oh, right? Or, yeah. you know, I'm hungry or, you know, uh, and you and I did this. And I know we're off kind of a little bit of a tangent, but you and I did this. Like we did a little survey, right? Remember when we, we talked about this a few shows ago? Yeah. Which one? You ask people how they feel. Yeah. Or no, no, no. The question yeah, is, yeah. How, 
How many, happy? The happy one? No. How many, uh, how many days a month do you feel really good? Yeah. And most people say three to six or three to seven. Yeah. They don't, they don't normally feel good. They don't feel like on top of it. Like they wake up and they're like a ball of fire. Right? Yep. So for this chiropractor, that was a great thing, right? So it's like, you know, kind of like us saying, hey, my name is Bill. I'm shaking somebody's hand. You got a house for sale? Yeah. That's, I was going to say that. What do we say? Do you have a house for sale? Yeah. They say no. We say nice knowing you. We go that away. Pretty much. Okay. So 60% of your success, and it's not even marketing, but 60%, because think of it this way, Pete. What starts everything? Um, In the house business, what starts everything? Communication. Yeah, so it would be the first contact, right? Yeah. I mean, you can't communicate until you contact somebody, right? Yeah. So you're right about communication, but you got to contact somebody first, right? Yeah, it's like, you know, actually, to be really technical, it's get their attention. Right. Right? Right, but you got to contact them to get their attention. Yeah. Right. So yeah. So the first, so, so you're 100 percent correct. You got to get their attention, right? Yeah. And, and either way you do it, you could do it both ways. The point is this: is who do you contact? Mm. So that's like before you say, "I need to contact sellers." Well, who? Can you be more specific about it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, what I, what I like about what you do is that you take the big generality. Oh, I want to do real estate. Lovely. That's like saying, I want to go into business. Good. Go ahead. What business? Right. What real estate? It's right. not all the same. Right. It's not just a blob of real estate. And you break it down into, you know, pretty houses, ugly houses, the seven offers, but you break it down into things. And that's what you're right. doing right now, breaking it down to who you're going to talk to just to get the thing started. But right. it's very specific what do you focus in on? Not just throw something, throw money out the window, but focus. I mean, that's what I like about what you do. You, you pinpoint stuff so you have a better chance of getting something done. Or you don't have losses. Like, for example, if I can't get a bank loan, then why would I look at ugly houses? Why would I go on the MLS and ask a realtor to look at houses for me if I don't have a proof of funds letter? Right. You can't buy you can't do that is because I don't know any difference. I don't know anything else. <laughs> and you think that's a stupid thing, but we have had people interested, right? They come to the meetings and you let them come along for the ride one morning to look at a house. Oh boy, I really want to do this. Oh, that's great. So do you know any contractors? No. Do you have any money? No. Do you know any lenders? No. You go down the list of all the things you need to put the puzzle together. No, 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 no. So why are they bothering? So they have to listen to you and find the one thing that they could do you know, in your offers or just where to start. You can't right. start there. The point is uh, when we first started a couple minutes ago, I was like, what starts every deal? Yeah. It's who you contact. So I have so many uh, people, and I mean this, so many people tell me they have trouble finding deals. Yeah. They haven't found, in marketing they call them an avatar, but we're not going to go there. I mean, they, don't, they haven't found that like, who's, who's the perfect seller for me right usually what happens is is the investor starts and he does it backwards he's like he just puts it out there i want to buy a house right and then goes and finds the resources you know the money and the contractors all the stuff you were just saying <clears throat> what if i tell you by the end of this show it's going to go the other way around you actually figure out what resources you have and then go find those sellers well, that sounds a little smarter. Wouldn't that be easier? Yeah, well, that might work. Yeah. All right, good. So let's go back to my notes. 60% <coughs> of the marketing is who you're talking to. The segmentation, as we talked about, the list segmentation, okay? 20% mm -hmm. of it is your media. That's how you're reaching them? Right. So is it newspaper? Is it internet? Is it pay-per-click? Is it mail? Is it, how is it? How do they, how do they absorb data? How do they go look for things? Right. So it's a communication channel because there's yeah. many channels. It's which one might this person be looking at? Right. 
And then 20% of it is your message, or as we call it, our offer. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So that's the three triangles from Dan Kennedy's. The three M's is message, market, media, right? So the market is who, the message is the offer, and the media is how you're, how you're going to talk to them, how you're going to find them. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> Grant Cardone, in his book, I think, Obsessed, talks about just talk to new people every day. Mm -hmm. Right? We talk about that. Just talk to new sellers every day. Yeah. Okay? Now, like I said, 60% who's your talk to. So, which means you can eliminate about 60% of your suspects if you do your homework and know exactly what congregation your resources perfectly fit mm -hmm. and where they hang out. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, if I were to set up a lemonade stand in the middle, middle of the desert, the, 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 uh, the Sahara desert, mm -hmm. right. Would that be good? Well, if you were there, you'd be really thirsty, but is anybody there? So yeah, you might have less people to sell lemonade to, but that one thing of lemonade, you might make a hundred dollars. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You can charge more if one guy comes by. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to divert for one second because I just thought of something. So give me one second. I'm going to open my browser here. So when you're putting that little lemonade stand on the Sahara desert, see if you can put it on a trail between two oases or cities. Right. Okay. Just, yeah, pe people that would normally travel. But the point is, is that, that you, you don't need a lot of deals. You just yeah. need one good one. Yeah. Right? So. <clears throat> it's like having the only gas station between this city and that city with a hundred miles of desert in between. And you're the one gas station in the middle. There you go. Okay, so I wrote an email three days ago, right? And I'm going to read just one paragraph of it so you can get what I'm talking about. So if you're on my email list, you probably saw this. I hope you saw this. If you're not, then go to flippinghousesforrookies.com forward slash free stuff and anything that you choose, you will, I'll get your email address and you can be on my list. So, uh, or on the front page, there's a few places to get. So the, the subject column is humongous real estate secret to learn from Starbucks. I wrote the first paragraph. So the great Perry Marshall, who's a marketing guru, once wrote, ready? Mm -hmm. If you sell coffee as a commodity, it's worth two cents a cup. Yeah. If you sell it as a good, it's worth 25 cents a cup. If you sell it as a service, it's worth a dollar a cup. If you sell it as an experience, it's worth $5 a cup. Yep. Okay. So yeah. if you're the yeah. only lemonade yeah. stand on well, the desert, uh, what, it, it's, more than, it's more than just it's, it's experience because it's like it's either that or you die a thirst. Yeah. I saw, by the way, I saw coming home yesterday, I saw the cars lined up around the block to drive through the uh, Starbucks. There you go. Well, I'm not sure what the experience is anymore, but they, they, they still think it's an experience, That's even though it's just a come on, it's just a good now, right. uh, you know, something. They, they walk with a little bit of service, still paying the same amount for the experience that they're not getting by going inside, but they're still lining up. That's right. There's signs on the street, it's, do not it, park it, here. It's, it's, like a head, it's an experience, yeah. Yeah, so you still have the, uh, uh, the feeling. So think of it this way. <clears throat> McDonald's was trying to do this. Uh, not McDonald's. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts was trying to do this. Starbucks did it a better job. Mm. Uh, I'll go to the church where I work, and uh, there's all girls there, which is a thing in its own, but I'm surrounded by girls, right? We're outnumbered. It's bad. Yeah. So, you know, the people that work there, okay? Yeah. So we'll get ready to, like, do an event or get ready to do something, and two or three of them have to get their Starbucks 
<laughs> ready for the event. <laughs> no names mentioned. That's the experience. Okay. They have to get their Starbucks and get ready for their event because it's like a treat and a caffeine boost at the same time. They have to prepare themselves with the Starbucks. Right. That's after the makeup and hair. <laughs> All right. So, if I tell you that the best results we're getting right now is the different medias that we've tested. Mm -hmm. So, you know this because we were doing a lot of signs, right? Yeah. Now we're not doing signs. What are we doing? Uh, we're doing... Uh... Texting? Texting. Yeah. Texting first to a lot of Facebook, I mean, uh, F, for sale by owners, people that are already saying they want to sell the house. I mean, I have some signs left and I'm putting them up because I got them. And eh, let me know if anything happens because the phone rings in your office. But here's the thing. Not only that, but I put out signs with not a phone number on it. It's text me at and put a text oh. number on the signs. Ah. So see how the media has changed? Did you get those yet? I, I passed them all out. Emma and I did that. We passed them out. Okay. Well, we didn't pass them out. We put them, you know, on, on corners. Yeah. Okay. So now get this. <clears throat> if 60% of it is you're talking to the right person mm -hmm. and 20% of it is having the right media and you figure out that media, you like hone in on that media. Yeah. Right? Then the icing on the cake is if you understand the loan to value formula that I teach at flippinghousesforrookies.com forward slash free stuff. Just scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and watch the video. We just went over that formula at the beginning of this podcast, the loan to value ratio, right? Yeah. Simply means that uh, if they owe $90,000 on a hundred thousand dollar house, don't offer them 70 because they're not going to, I mean, you could, but your likelihood is not, they're not going to take it. So that's why we have the seven different strategies. So you have the offers you can give them mm. based on how much equity they have in the house. Right. So if you, if the icing on the cake is if you understand the loan value formula that, that we teach you, right. So you can make the correct offer based on the individual seller's personal equity. You've just hit a home run, right? Mm -hmm. so if you had, if you, if you have the right list, you have the right media and you talk about the right dollar amount, what they're going to get in their pocket because equity is synonymous to profit. Right. What's going to happen to your offers? Well, they can do a lot better. And you know, you talk about the loan to value, like it's like almost everyday stuff because you're so used to it, but people don't talk about this. I mean, it's different. If a person owns a house, there's different levels of equity that he has or doesn't have. And it's a huge difference in how he can sell the house. He's, he's tied to some limitations and some problems. If you don't pay any attention to that, you miss the boat. But you pay attention to that. Well, so, let me ask you this question. If I want to go duck hunting and I loaded up my car with my rifle and all my ammunition and drove into Manhattan, what do you think would happen? First, you'd get arrested. <laughs> You then you wouldn't find any ducks except in Central Park, and then you get arrested again, <laughs> and you wouldn't get any ducks. That's what it's like when I'm talking to a real estate person, a person, a seller. It's like, if I, if I want to go duck hunting, where do I go? I'm going to yeah. go in the country where there's like woods and a pond and where they, their normal flight path, right? I went through this when I, when I first, when I was a boy, my, the guy that raised me is 100% Sioux Indian. You talk, I hear me talk about him all the time. Actually, mm -hmm. I keep saying Sioux Indian. He is 100% American Indian. I think he was Sioux. It's, they told me the other day that he, I was talking to one of his family, that he was a different tribe, but that yeah. doesn't matter. He was 100%. He taught me the word indigenous. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means uh, plants or animals that belong in certain areas as their normal habitat. That's where they come from. So they're there because of the environment. Mm -hmm. They were developed so because of the environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like they couldn't live anywhere else because they need all the other pieces and parts to go with it, right? Yep. Your seller is the same way. 
Mm-hmm. Like there's certain indigenous offers that you can give in certain places, right? Like I wouldn't go duck hunting to Manhattan. Yeah. That's not indigenous to Manhattan. Like if I go yeah. down there with a couple of shotguns wrapped in the back of my window of my pickup truck and my camouflage clothes on, chewing tobacco. <laughs> Good trouble, boy. I don't know what it's going to happen, but I don't think it's going to be anything to do with ducks, okay? <laughs> nope. All right. So if you put these three things together that I'm telling you about, and I'm going to give you the examples for all the deals in a minute, but if you put all these three things together, doesn't it sound like that we put the right ingredients into the cake and we're going to have a really good cake? Well, it sure sounds like you put some thought into it, not just shooting in the dark. That's for damn sure. Right. It's going to give us a better result mm. because you're right. We put some thought in it. So, so the only wild card that we have left here is at this point, what do you say to the seller once you locate them? Mm. Right. And I'm going to explain all that today as well. But more importantly, if you go to flipping houses for rookies.com forward slash free stuff, there's scripts there. You don't have to worry about what you say. And everything I talk about today, you can get for free on our website. Okay. Yeah. So let's go into the meat and potatoes. Now that we have the theory behind it, let's go into the meat and potatoes on how all of these uh, work. Um, as soon as you, how you can get all these to work for you as soon as you finish this episode. Okay. Yeah. So let's start with, um, did your phone die? No, I'm at 34% down from 35. Good. I'm okay. Just checking it. Good. I don't know why, but we're lucky boys today. It's okay. We're recording on our telephones because, uh, actually we should have probably announced this at the beginning of the show Pete's in Connecticut and I'm in Florida. So, uh, we're, we're practicing social distancing. Yes. By 1500 miles. miles. Yeah. Get away. <laughs> All right, so let's start with the slot deal, the sandwich lease option transfer, right? So where would this congregation hang out? Where would they be? So they're for sale by owners, right? I suggest that you do like a 45 to 90 day seller. Now 45 to 60 days is even better. If you understand the market, you'll understand this. And it's been called buyer and seller market before. So I'm going to kind of not use that same language, but very close. Okay. If you put a property on, on the market and within 30 days you have a contract and often can close, that would be a hot market, right? Yeah. That'd be good for sellers because they know they can sell pretty quick, right? Otherwise known as a seller's market. That's right. Yeah, it's good for them. Right. If you put a property on the market and, it, and 90 days later, or it takes more than 90 days to get offers or the right offers that are high enough and to be able to sell it, then that would be a cold market, right? Yeah. Also called the buyer's market because that means the buyers could pick and choose what they want. Yeah, they're going around pick and choosing, discarding things, waiting their sweet time, finding the right thing for them for their benefit while the seller kind of holds, holds, uh, holds on. Well, they know that there's plenty of houses on the market, so they don't have to pour it up with, you know, well, I don't like the color of the walls. Right. Or I want to be closer to the school or whatever, right? They don't have to put up with it because they know there's a lot of houses in the market. They just need to keep looking, right? Yeah, they just pick the, the, the perfect one for them. Right. So between that 30 and 90 days is a sweet spot. So when a person puts their house on the market, how often have we spoken to a for sale by owner? And they're like, hot pants and all my house is the best house ever. You know, I did this, I did that. It's the best house in the neighborhood, which by the way, every seller tells me that just about, especially if it's pretty, you know, my house has this, my house has that. All the other houses don't have that. And they tell you all the reasons why they're asking 10 grand over market value. Yeah. And quite simply, some of those sellers just need the market to humble them a little bit. 
So how long have those houses, how long have those houses been on the market? Like five days, a week or two? That's right. They just start, that's what they sound like when they're just starting out, all cocky, right? Now you can see that if you look online or where can you see that? There's days on market. You can see that online. Zillow. Uh, right? If they're for sale by owners, there'll be a note somewhere in the information how, how long, right? Not only that, but I just realized the other day that you can see, uh, you can see how many people say, how many people visited that Zillow ad. Oh yeah. How many people saved it. Yeah. So you can see how hot the property is. Sure. So 30 days in, 45 days in, they're telling you how great the house is. And you wouldn't say this to them, but you're thinking, yeah, it's been 45 days. You've had 2,000 views, uh, 500 saves, and no one's bought your house yet. So you don't say that. Well, no to the offers. No it's offers. It's no offers. They've, nobody's offered it. And you and I have had that happen. It's like, you know, because you're, you're, you're funny, you know. Uh, like the meetup, for example, we do meetup.com and we keep adding all the, all these names to meetup, but we only have 30 or 40 people that show up at the live meetups. It doesn't matter if we've got, we had that when we had 200 people. Now that we yeah. have 1,000 people, we still have the same amount of people come. That's a thing. And, and it's like, it's like, so what's the sense of having 2,000 if you only got, if you know what I mean? So it's important. Okay. So the point is, is that when you're, what we're talking about now is, is the person that has had the house on the market and they're starting to humble because they don't have, off, they don't have offers or they didn't have enough people walk through the house. Yeah. Well, it's reality time. Right. We know when we sell a house, we need to get a hundred, 120 phone calls, 20, 30 people through the house to get four or five offers. Mm -hmm. if we're lucky, right. So we know those stats, but they don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a slot deal is perfect for this, okay? And especially for the seller that is stubborn and wants his price. Mm, you yeah. just give him his price. Because on a slot deal, you could do that. Just give him his price. Even if it's over market value, you can give him his price. Not by a lot. You know, not by on a $150,000 house. It can't be two hundred, dollars but it could be one hundred and sixty, one hundred and seventy. dollars Yeah. Right. And the reason why is because you just get more time to pay them down. So instead of getting a two year uh, lease option, you might want to get a 10 year if, you, if he's 20 grand over or seven year. You just go longer term. Right. Right. Or, or lower payments. <coughs> but in a slot deal, you don't have to worry about that because your buyers paying the your buyers paying the, the premium, uh, the, the premium price. He's paying the payments. So. You're not making any money on any of that. All you're making money on is the is is the difference between what you can buy for and what you can sell for. So, if you can uh, sign a contract with your seller for 190, and your seller is willing to, I mean, your buyer is willing to give you 200 and a ten thousand dollar down payment, you make money on the ten thousand right? dollars. Right. Right. So the way you make money on a slot deal is the difference between the deposit your buyer gives you and the deposit you have to give your seller. That's how you make your money. Right. Yeah. So. This is a perfect pool for these, like for sell by owners. How about renters, Pete? Sure. How about renters? You go on to Zillow people, and you could sort by renters. Right. People that are renting the house, not rooms, or, but renting a house, for example. Because how many people have we run into where uh, they become accidental landlords? Mm -hmm. And that means that they bought another house or they have another place to go. And they're kind of stuck with this property. They, most of them tried to put it on the MLS or listed with the realtor. The realtor couldn't perform or something happened. They just, whatever with realtors, they got a bugaboo about realtors or whatever. And they tried selling on their own and it didn't happen. So they're mm -hmm. like, oh, I'll just rent it. You know, and all they're thinking about at that particular point is the money. They're not thinking about all the work that goes with it. Yeah. So they're, they're not thinking about being a landlord. They're just thinking about paying their mortgage with the renter's money. So they mm -hmm. become accidental landlords. <clears throat> and those are good slot deals. Right? Yeah. So that's, that's, that's definitely fishing in the right pond, huh? Make sense? Yep. Sounds right. <clears throat> so the best media to use with these folks is we text them to warm them up because you and I both know that in today's generation, 
Uh, if you call someone and you're and you don't recognize the phone number because everybody has cell phones with caller ID, and if you don't recognize this, the phone number, you won't answer the phone. You'll wait and listen to the message, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. where we were calling a lot of for sale by owners before with the for sale by owners script, which still works, we found you found because you you started texting people and it kind of sent us set, set me off on a tangent, right? Mm -hmm. So where you're texting mm -hmm. people. You know, like, is the house still for sale? Are you the owner? Would you be willing to lease it for a year or two? And then I buy it, right? Yeah. Those three questions. We found that that warms them up. At least they know who you are and what you want. After you get through those three or four questions that you talk by text, then you get them on the telephone and you ask the correct questions. And you could use the for sale by owner script if you so desire right off of our website, just go to flippinghousesforrookies.com forward slash free stuff. Now, here's the thing. I have a couple of uh, millennials in the coaching group oh, no. that uh, have not openly admitted to me that they want to be on the phones and have been using the FISBO script all much further down than what I use it because I like to get on the phone and talk to people. Well, I don't do it anymore. I don't do it anymore. Yeah, I don't do it anymore. Um, my you know, my VAs and stuff do the phone calls. I get on the I, I get on the deal meeting call. I don't get on the deal hunting call, which is different. Uh, but they're texting all the way down that list, and they're making deals without hardly talking to these people, just in text. So it is very doable. So texting is a big thing. Okay. Well, I imagine that if the person you're reaching really prefers texting as well, it would work. If they want to talk, it might not. But the guy on the other side could be the same way. Like, gee, I'd rather just text all the way through. And if they match, that'll work. So let's stay here for one second, okay? Somebody puts a house for sale. What do you say? Like, first of all, what, what, what is this thing that you always say about calling, about cold calling somebody? Me? Yeah, you say. Uh, I, I don't know. What do I say? Which part of what? <laughs> yeah, you, like, you get your head up your butt today? Well, I say a lot of things. What are you, what are you heading for? So when somebody's afraid to call, cold, cold call a seller, what do you say? Well, if they're afraid to cold call, I just tell them to text them, right? Right. Why? Just text them. Um, because, well, a few things. You have to do something. you got two choices, call or text. If you're not going to call, you have to text. The other reason you just said the person will probably answer uh, a text rather than they're not going to pick up the phone anyways. Okay, so good. So you might as well text them, and they, they see – at least what the information is. So we got that straight, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Now, what do you think happens to this person when, so, so basically what you're telling me is, is this person's advertising a house. Oh, I know where you're going. For sale. Right. So when somebody contacts them, whether they're calling them or texting them, they're very, very happy that you called them. Right. They scream up and down, they jump up and down, honey, honey, somebody's calling about the house. They're happy. They're not pissed unless, off, they're happy. Unless they're at work or at a birthday party or doing something else that they don't want to be bothered. Right. And here's what happens. Most people don't realize how much work it takes to sell a house. So they went in with all full intentions and now it's a month later and they haven't sold this house, and they got a bunch of idiots calling them. Oh, yeah, by the way, and these aren't the idiots. Uh, by the way, who called them the most? Uh, for sale by realtors. owners, who calls them the most? Realtors. Why? They're looking for business. They have to find customers. Because the realtor knows that 88% of the for sale by owners get fed up with it. They get fed up with the phone calls. They get fed up with the process, and they just give up, and they're like, okay, I'll give it to the list. I'll give it to a realtor. Yeah. That's why they do it, right? Yeah. So – what if the guy's at work? Is he going to want to take your phone call? No. No, and that's the beauty of texting. It's like sending a, a letter in the mail, which just takes longer, or an email, any of that stuff. The way communication works now is you drop the message. The person picks it up when they can. They respond when you, they can. You answer when you can. It can take a little longer, but it actually connects the dots. Totally. And people communicate when they're, when they're willing to or able to. Yep. So – Texting, forms them up so you can get on the phone and do real deal. Okay, so texting is the attention you were talking about. We get their attention. With sure. By just saying, hey, is whatever address still for sale. Okay? 
Oh, so you know what? You just froze a little bit. Yeah, yeah. it's back now, right? Yeah. Okay, good. So what's the message you would use? Well, I already told you, it's the for sale by owner script. Just go to flipping houses for rookies and use that for here. Now, be aware that this script is for outbound calls. The FISBO script, the for sale by owner script is for outbound calls, meaning that the call was originated or started with you cold calling them. Right. Or texting them. Right. Okay. So <clears throat> that works. So the process that we just talked about works miracles for the slot deal, the option deal, and a rent to own or lease option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these congregations are really good for the investor that can't get a loan, doesn't have a lot of deposit money, doesn't have a lot of experience, they could find a rent to own from someone, say I find a rent to own from you, and then sublease it to somebody else. Or do a slot deal mm -hmm. and just, just get a finder's fee for finding the seller. I mean, finding the bar. Right. Right? Sure. So this is these three slot deal, option deal, <coughs> lease option, <coughs> excuse me, are perfect in this congregation. Do we agree? So we're gonna move, Absolutely. We're gonna move down the list because we just covered slot deal, we covered option deal, and we covered lease option deals. Yeah. Rent home. So yeah. now we're down as far as subject to or getting the deed. So how do we find yeah. those people? We clear? Yeah, yeah. How do we find those people? Yeah, so the best congregation for these people are going to be things like divorce, right? Probate or estate deals, mm. right? Uh, out of area owners, which is the one we use the most. Uh -huh. Relocation. Those are great. Those are, those are like perfect subject to deals. Hey, Bill, is there a way to find people that might have equity in that ballpark of 80%? Maybe finding somebody who's lived in the house for 10 years or eight years or something that might put them in that ballpark. Does that work? Every list company has a list by equity. By equity. Oh, even better. So would that work to find somebody in that ballpark of between I don't know, 60 and 80%, 85, somewhere in there, yep. 70? Yep. Okay. That's, that's crazy. You're talking about looking for people with that equity. You can get the list of people with that equity. Listsource.com, uh, melissadata.com. Yeah. Uh, there's a few others I can't think of off the top of my head, but Listsource is a great yeah. place to do that. Uh, Melissa Data is a great place to do that. Uh, REI, REI something, I forgot the name of it. Um, there's a few places, a list, a good list yeah. broker will get that for you. Not only that, but they'll give you demographics too of income, age, all that stuff. Right. Okay. So what's the best media to use for these folks? So these are the lists. Mm. So what's the best media, right? So the best media is actually direct mail. Mm. We use yellow letters, right? But direct mail or, or a series of letters if you're going to type them, okay? <clears throat> Which, by the way, God bless Mr. Dan Kennedy <coughs> because he did something for my life when he taught me this. <coughs> I should have a cough drop. He taught me that ugly male sells. <laughs> ugly, it's not, it's, ugly what? male sells. What does that mean? Oh, um, I've run into this when, if you have a really slick operation, really slick sign, sometimes that backfires. It looks too slick to people. I think they don't trust it. They think it's too slick and you're too slick for them and you're going to outwit them somehow, trick them. Or it blends in. 
Oh, blends in to all the other beautiful slick marketing out there. Everybody yeah. thinks their marketing has to be professional. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll tell you what I did one time, Peter. I don't know if I ever told you this story. I wrote my yellow letter in crayon. <laughs> uh, like, how? <laughs> My daddy's sick and told me he needed to get this letter to you and ask me to write it for you, for him. Are you serious? Now, did you do a lot of them in cram? We did a few thousand of them, and it worked just as good as the other letters. I, I, don't, I don't remember. Oh, man. We wrote I mean, it. I'm just saying, it's crayon. hard to write. It's not easy to write in cram. It's, it's, it's awkward. <laughs> okay. Another letter, we wrote it in cram. My daddy's sick or my daddy something. And it was from Jesse. My daddy's sick and can't write you a letter, but he wanted to get this message to you, so I'm writing it for him. Oh God! And then, and then, and the, and and the thing that I don't remember is we actually uh, put on the second or third page a coupon, and she and we drew on crayon and then drew a picture in the coupon. So someday I'll have my granddaughter. She's she's going to be eight, maybe she's nine or ten. My grandpa is sick. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Oh, God. So, so direct mail is a great way to reach these guys. I don't do this, but I have a few buddies that do pay-per-click, you know, Google pay-per-click, which is search engine, search engine, uh, Google search engine stuff. Uh, talk about having a laser-focused market. Once you understand <coughs> what we're talking about here, everything that we're talking about can be done on Google and a segmentation. Because Google knows pay-per-click is just that. You put an ad, you yeah. give them the criteria of who you want to see it, <clears throat> and Google will put it there. And when somebody clicks on that ad, you pay for it. You know, whether it's 25 right. cents or $25, you pay for it. Yeah. But it's supposedly the perfect customer. Right? How about yeah. banner signs? Banner signs in Google, right? So the same way you can do pay-per-click, you can also, Google has a magnificent system on using banners, you know, across the top of that, across the top of what they, or sidebars, you know, the ads you see in the sidebars? Well, yeah. they have a bunch of people that make money off of having blogs. So they write a blog and they get eyes to the blog, right? And then they put the ads on the site. And Google will charge you per thousand of images <clears throat> so it might be like 50 cents per thousand but you're not paying for clicks you're paying for this for them to show your ad right well think of it it's this way. Like I, market I don't i don't do this but think of it this way we put out yellow signs right yeah imagine if we did virtual yellow signs this way well, it might work better because the signs are kind of passe. They've been done. It's a little bit old. Sounds like a good idea to try. So the reason why the bandit signs don't work, I think, is because too many people use them, and that's not the problem, but they use them and people would call up and they would want to get give them, make them, wholesalers would use them because they say pay cash, yeah. right? And, and they don't, people don't recognize the difference between pay cash and what we do, okay? Right. The bottom line is, is this. Too many of them got low ball offers. So now when you put the yellow signs out, they're like, oh, those are those guys that they're low balling. Yeah. They want to pay the low price. No sense of going to them. Yeah, right? well, those signs say cash. And cash is going to be low, low right. amounts. But they don't know that. Give you cash. They don't know that. That's what my point is. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So it just it's worn out. That's all because people think that you're trying to lowball them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are the couple medias you could use for subject two, which are direct mail, which is my best media that I've used for ten years and has always worked is direct mail to out of area. Mm -hmm. that, those are perfect for subject two deals. I find other things too, but those are perfect for subject two deals, which is why I do. Right. Okay. <clears throat> and then the other two is pay-per-click or banner signs. The message that you would use or the way you would talk to these people would be the prospect suspect form. 
mm -hmm. which is different than the FISBO script, right? And I've had a lot of confusion about this. That's why it's, I want to make it very clear here. The difference between a prospect suspect form and the, and the uh, FISBO, uh, prospect suspect form and a FISBO script is one's an outbound call and one's an inbound call. Mm -hmm. So the FISBO script is a script for you're originating the call, you're starting the call, you're, 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 you're cold calling for all intents mm -hmm. and purposes. The, the prospect suspect form is designed that you put your mail out, they call, they leave you a message, you call them back and say, hey, here I am. And then the yeah. prospect suspect form <clears throat> is a document that has all the data you need on one piece of paper. So it's not technically a script, but it has all the questions you should ask about the property. So it's all in one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. Good. So we're gonna move on now. So that was subject to or, or uh, getting the D, okay? The next one down is uh, rehab, retail, and wholesale. We're going to do those together. Okay? Sure. Now, the best congregation for those properties are vacant houses, pre-foreclosure, code violations, <clears throat> MLS. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll read them again. So it would be vacant houses, so you can get lists for all these you know, vacant houses, right. pre foreclosure, liens, code violation, MLS. Okay. Mm -hmm. The best media to use for these would be bandit signs. Yeah, because they say cash, and that's kind of that deal. <clears throat> so bandit signs, internet, you know, pay per click or bandits, you know, the, the banner signs we were talking about. And like I said, the banded yeah. signs, we put those in people's drive routes. We go to where people are with the banded signs. You put them next to Walmarts and, you know, grocery stores, the drive routes for the local traffic, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, the internet has local traffic too, just like we have roads that we drive our cars on. <laughs> the internet has roads too, right? And we all take certain paths to get to certain things, you know? Like some people go to Yahoo for their email. Some people go to Gmail for their email, right? It's all the roads that you travel on the internet. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to put yep. those, those bandit signs. Am I gargling? No, you sound okay. Are you fine? Okay, good. Um, so you could put those bandit signs in the path of progress that the people are going to. Mm -hmm. Right? So... Uh, the congregation is people that have vacant houses, pre-foreclosure, liens, code violations, and MLS. The best media to use to find these people would be bandit signs, internet, realtors, and an ant farm. I know what that is, but do you oh, think you I do. will listen to them? What an ant farm is? Go ahead. Well, when I drive down the street, I occasionally see these properties myself and I tell me, but what if I had a few family members, a few friends, if they saw something, I have them call me, let me know, and I'll give them a couple of bucks or give them a big bucks when, you know, if I buy and sell it. So right. people that are looking around for, they can visually see them. Right. So what, what we did is we took a, a, a map of Connecticut and we put it on the, on, the, on, on the wall in the office, and I took a magic marker, and I made zones. It just mm -hmm. circled areas, okay? I need to sneeze. Hang on a second. Excuse me. So once we had zones, you know, neighborhoods or towns or whatever, once we had zones, we would put an ad, uh, usually on Craigslist, or back then it was in the newspaper, right? Which, by the way, Penny papers are a great way to advertise. Those weekly penny papers, you know, like, like you see them in the convenience stores, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you think they still are? I mean, I used to use them for other business. I don't so much anymore. You think they're still good for this? Yes. Because it's, it's real estate? Yeah, because it's cheap. It's cheap and you'll hit an older market. 
right? Older, that's that's the part. That's that's true because only only older people bother with newspapers anymore. So, so it, it fits that market for that reason. Okay. Older people read, yeah. younger people don't. Right? Yeah. So we put this this map on the wall, we draw these territories out, and we would number them. And we put an ad either in the newspaper or in Craigslist, and we would get people to say, you know, uh, uh, I think we used to say, make, make whatever, 50 bucks. Uh, all you need is a car, a camera, and uh, something, I forgot what it was, something like that. We had an ad. E right? Email. No, they would bring them to us. So what we would do is we would give them a form and tell them when they found the house, they had to do certain things. They would have to take a picture of the house, a picture of the street left, a picture of the street right, and um, you know, there was certain criteria that they had to give us for the content. They just couldn't say, hey, there's a house for sale at like 123 Main Street. No, they had to prove it to us. And then we would pay extra money if they went and knocked on the neighbor's house and found out the name of the person who owns the house. Hmm. So give them a bonus for that. Yeah. I think it was $10 a house and $50 if they got a name or something like that, or $25 if they got a name, something like that. And yeah. I had <clears throat> stay-at-home moms. They would put the kids in the car and they would drive around and look for houses. And they would bring us back these forms. And as long as the forms were filled out and the pictures were correct, you know, then it was uh, harder to take pictures. We used to, used to use a Polaroid camera back then, but now with phones, we don't have to do that anymore. As long as the picture is correct, we would just pay them their money. You know, if they had 10 of them, then I would give them a hundred dollars yeah. for driving around and they would find vacant houses. Uh, again, it's a lot easier now because what we would do uh, back then is we, we had us, we had to figure out who owned the houses, but nowadays, you know, you can get skip tracers for like 15 or 25 cents a name. You know, that's crazy. And a skip to find, tracer, to find it. Skip tracer will go find the owner. Yeah. So it's a website now via websites. Yeah. A few websites. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good way. That's an, that's a way to find it. So I'm sure there are cities like in Chicago, you know, where there's a lot of vacant houses that somebody could make a fortune there, you know, just, just contacting those people. Right? Yeah. The uh, new internship that we're working on that I do every month now, uh, the new internship is uh, all about making the offer first, doing the qualifying later. So even like with these houses, if you find these houses, you find the seller, uh, just send them an offer. Don't even try to call them. Just send them an offer. And if they, you know, if they call you back, then you do a deal. Or two weeks after you send them an offer, call them and say, I sent you an offer. What do you think? Right? Yeah. So that's like the newest thing, right? So the best message for these getting the deed properties and, 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 lead, and subject to properties is uh, a free recorded message. So when they call, they get a free recorded message and they get the like the lay of the land before you even get started. Mm -hmm. My free recorded message is 66 minutes long, five and a half, five and a half minutes long. And it's because I tell them, here's what I can do for you. They know before I get on the phone with them. And then once, once they, once they listen to that free recorded message, they can either you know, dial nine or six or whatever and come to a live operator um, or which we don't even do anymore because uh, I don't want those kind of deals or they can uh, leave a message and we'll call them back and we do a prospect suspect for them. But they bring right. you. Okay. Yeah. And your message has all the answers to the questions that they normally ask because you figure that out and just put all the answers there. Of what are they wondering? What are they going to ask? What do they, what do they want to know? And just have all the answers there. And if they're interested, then you pursue it. So when you do enough of this, you'll start to realize there's frequently asked questions and I just covered them all in my six minute thing. All right. So then the last one, and then we're going to get out of here because uh, now I'm getting hungry. Um, owner financing. So the best congregation to find owner financing deals is expired listings. Um, overpriced houses like we were talking about before that guy that puts his house on the market in five days you talk to him and he's like trying to sell his house because it's got 32 extra roof shingles and the water travels faster and the heat is in 70 degrees it's a moist 70 degrees okay so <laughs> you, think, you think i haven't heard this stuff before 
okay? Because he has some special filter in there and it's not a dry 70 degrees, it's a moist 70 degrees, okay? Hey, Bill, I used to have one of those. It really is a wonderful feature. You should buy my house. It's really wonderful. I don't have it anymore. I really miss it. Moist is good. There you go. So uh, over, uh, start from the top, expired listings, overpriced deals, uh, lists with high equity that we were talking about before. So you yeah. can find lists that have 80% or more equity, 70% more or more equity, and you can mail to those. Um, we use, uh, and this is a paid service, we use PropStream, uh, which does that, um, which by the way, you can get flipping at flippinghousesforrookies.com forward slash PropStream. It's P-R-O-P-S-T-R-E-A-M, PropStream. Uh, mm -hmm. P like in Paul, right? Prop stream. Okay. I'm assuming that's property stream. Yeah. I'm guessing property. Yeah. I guess I have no idea. You get a stream um, of property through it. Flipping houses for rookies.com forward slash prop stream. We use prop stream because props, one of the most under marketed, underutilized feature that prop stream has is right on one of their tabs. When you open up a property, or put in an address, it says the amount of people in that territory that paid cash for a house. There's, there's an icon there that says people that paid cash. Yeah. And it'll, it'll show like we did it on the coaching call the other night. Uh, like the girl, one of my coaching clients is from Hawaii and we did it. And, and it was like, she's telling me there's no property there. And I'm like, you know, cause she goes on to Zillow and there's like six pieces of property for sale. I'm like, yeah, prop stream. She goes, yeah. I said, look, and we go into prop stream, and there was something like, I forgot, 3,600 houses that people paid cash for. It's a great so, mailing list. Well, I guess I don't get that completely. They paid cash for their house? Yeah. And does, Which deal are we on? on the, uh, pretty clear. Uh, they're not for sale, but they could be. That's the point. They could be. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're, 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 you're enticing them. Now, if you build your list, okay, with the right demographics, like you have your list broker, not only tell you that they have free and clear, but then they're born before a certain year, then you know that they're going to like, like retirement, you know, like try to get 60 and above. Right, so yeah. that'd be so it'd be 2020, so that would be 1960, right? Yep, that would be 60, 60 years old, right? That's right. So, if you get demographics, anybody be, be born before 1960 that has a free and clear house, don't it's you? It's pretty think, old, don't you? Yeah, don't you think that you could write a, a letter about retiring? Yeah. Right? Not taking care of the maintenance in the house anymore, taking care of the house anymore. You don't have to do it. You could just, and you could turn your house into a profit center, an ATM machine. Yeah. Right? Wouldn't it make sense that when you write that letter, it's totally written to them? Sure. So are you going to find a lot of those deals? No. Uh, maybe not, but you only need one at a time. You only need one at a time, right? So... The media that we're going to use for a free and clear house or owner financing deal would be direct mail, like we were just talking about, right? And you wouldn't use the crayons. You would want to use something a little better than crayons. I like that idea. <laughs> uh, EDDM. That's every door direct mail. That's done with the USPS, United States Postal Service. Just type in USPS into Google or type in EDDM, it's not something I made up, it's a very common thing. Basically, uh, what this is, is back before uh, the world became the way it is, this is going down to the, to the copy store place and printing off 100 flyers, getting them to the paper boy kid and tell him, hey, I'll give you 20 bucks if you put these in everybody's mailbox, right? That's what yeah. this is. That's what EDDM is. It's the legal way of putting your flyer or your postcard or your what a door hanger or whatever, whatever you want to call it in everybody's mailbox. Okay. <clears throat> the point that I'm trying to make here is, is if you 
if you are clever with this and and this is a little bit advanced but if you're clever with this you could take that list that your list broker gave you that has these names on it right mm -hmm. and you upload it to google maps and ask it to pin all the addresses you'll notice that the addresses are all conjugated in one certain area. Not all of them, but you'll notice there's congregations of areas where people that have free and clear houses live. Because hmm. people, of, uh, birds of a feather flock together, right? So especially here in Florida, this is huge here in Florida. You know, because there's like, you know, I went to visit my sister and had my other sister. I'm living with one and I went to visit the other one. And they're in a community of, I think they told me 385 condos. And when we went for a walk, we went down to walk to, they want to show me their boat. When we went down to walk and look for the boat, they're, hey, Joe, hey, Al, right? <coughs> three nights a week <coughs> in the clubhouse. It's not now because of coronavirus, but three nights a week in the clubhouse, they all meet for dinner. Huh? You know, $9 prime rib, you know, that kind of stuff, right? They all meet for dinner and probably the booze, I'm sure of that. But it's an older community. Sure. So, so do you think that if I did a free and clear search that I'm not going to have like a lot of people conjugated in that one area? Sure. So sure. all my point is, is that if you do, as I say, you buy a list from the list broker, you upload it to Google, and you find the congregations of those pins on the map, well, that would be where you would do your EDDM. Mm -hmm. You go in those neighborhoods and you could do direct mail in there. I mean, obviously you could do it, you could do it for, uh, you could do it for your mailing list, but the way mm -hmm. the post office works is they go by postal routes mm -hmm. as the mailman walks, right? So that's how they keep the cost so low as they do it by routes. So you're going to want to go into areas where the, postman walks around all these free and clear houses and put these flyers in the mailbox. Well, that would save you the trouble of uh, finding addresses, names, who owns it, lists, mailing. Mailing's not cheap, so it's, it would make sense just directly bring it to the door, like door hangers, whatever it is, in the mailbox, stuff, right. something. Yeah. Right. So the other thing that you could do is you could uh, get internet. You can go on the internet and you could do pay-per-click on the internet because there are certain uh, types of stores that in the people with higher incomes go to, you know, uh, that's a whole nother story in itself, but you can promote that on the internet, right? Okay. Be in those right places. Right. I know that we were using for one, at one point, I think it's called PNB or I forgot what, I, I don't know what the name, but it was software that I paid monthly for. And if I had, if I had a product I wanted to sell that, uh, that Home Depot users would buy, this software would put my ad up before Home Depot loaded on their computer. Yeah. On, on Facebook? On the internet. So if you typed in, you know, suppose I was selling uh, rakes, right? Yeah. And, and they type in, you know, Home Depot, anybody that went to the Home Depot ad would get, would see my pop up before they, they would think that it was, and if you wrote it right, they would think that it was Home Depot doing the pop up. But you could hijack Home Depot's traffic. Uh huh. Right? So there's a lot of things out there. You know, yeah. I'm not saying that I promote that, but I'm just saying there's a lot of things out there. Okay. Well, it makes you think, uh, obviously, for uh, us uh, newer people and, you know, people starting out, they don't have a big operation. They don't have a lot of money. Just several of the things you said today are really simple to do. Just get something going. Right. So this all makes sense. Just, just to give you another idea, um, this is way outside of the box, but I just want to rattle this off and then we're going to get out of here. I don't know how long we've been here. Yeah, we definitely got to get out of here. Okay. I'm just going to rattle this off just because, and if anybody has any question about this, then you'll have to send me a support ticket and I'll have to send you to my, to my guy that does this. But he told me he had a client that, uh, what was it? Something about the government, something about 
uh, getting money from the government, you know, like unemployment, but not unemployment, something like that. Some kind and, of benefit? Yeah, some benefit. I forgot what it was. Uh, something to do with health care. I don't remember exactly what it was. But they would go, and so he kept saying to him, where can you find these people? Anyways, bottom, bottom line is, is that they would take this actual application and they would bring it to an office. They would go to the off to this office, this city office. Yeah. He figured out how on Facebook to advertise to that exact building and only that building. <laughs> but, so when these people are sitting in the waiting room, scrolling their phone on Facebook, like most of them do, your ad would pop up, say, Hey, don't sit in the office and do all this paperwork. I can do it for you. He was an attorney. That's what it was. Wow. He was an attorney. So that's like, slick. Don't sit in this. Don't, don't, don't spend all the time in the office. I can do the paperwork for you real cheap. Okay. So the reason why we were talking about it is because I have a couple clients that are worried about credibility. Uh -huh. You make an offer to a seller and they're worried about your credibility. So what he was saying is, is that what we should do is we should take that person's address and focus just the marketing on that address. Okay. Mm -hmm. And send ads of credibility of testimonials to that address. <laughs> so if I was making an offer to you and it was a good offer and I really wanted it, I would go in and set up a Facebook ad for just your house so when you go on Facebook, you would get all these ads that say, oh, my God, I used Bill Hawthorne to buy my house. And it was I was really experienced. That's nuts. Right? That's nuts. It's that hard. It's like it was a really simple to do. Wow. It's not on Facebook ads. And it was really. But he was clever as hell to figure this out. So that is cle that is clever. That's crazy. Right. So all my point is, is that that. Today's day is a lot easier for us to buy houses as long as you've got this mindset that we're talking about in this podcast correctly. Because if you, if you focus on the, the 60% and the 20% and the 20%, you could definitely, like the reason why I'm bringing up the Facebook thing is because on owner financing and free and clear, who's on Facebook? The vast majority of people on Facebook are over 50. It's not the younger generation. They're on anymore. some other doodle dangle, doddle doodle, whatever. Instagram. It's not even that anymore. They got some other new platform. Mm -hmm. Uma told me the other day. It's some other well, new I'm at my sister's and she's on some platform. Um, I forgot what it is. There's short videos and she's like, she spends hours on that thing looking at these videos. And it's like, it's something I never even heard of. Do not tell my wife. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Let's just talk about one more thing before we get out of here, okay? Uh, and, and, and this is for people that want to make a full-time income doing real estate, okay? Uh, you need to run at least, and, this, and I, I did this for years. I didn't know this for years, and it's actually just recently that I, I really hammered this. You need to run at least three or four campaigns. You can't just run one campaign and expect to live off of it. And the campaigns yeah. are what I just talked about. The, each one of them is a separate campaign, right? And um, you need to make sure you fill your pipeline with leads because not every lead is going to work out. Not every deal is going to work out. You'll make deals with people in their house and then two weeks later, they're dead, right? So you have to have, you have to have, a steady stream of leads coming in, which is why I think that uh, Grant Cardone saying from the book Obsessed, you need to talk to new people every day. Mm -hmm. you need to talk to new sellers every day. And if you don't, you're not going to keep that pipeline full. Okay. So here's how I suggest that most people start. They pick one of the above strategies based on their available resources. Yeah. So if you have no credit and can't get a bank loan and don't know contractors or know anything about construction, then just stick with the slot deal, the option deal, and the lease option deal. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty houses. You don't need to do any of that. You don't need a bank. You don't need any of that. Just start with that strategy first. Start right. with those strategies we talked about. 
you know, with the for sale by owners and the texting and, and just stick with that, right? If you have five grand or 10 grand or 20 grand or have access to it, you know, somebody you know has it, then, you know, like a family or friend uh, or a credit line or a credit card, then go after subject to deals. They're more profitable, right? If you uh, have accessibility to anything over 20 grand, you know, like you got a friend that will lend it or you got an IRA or, you know, whatever, whatever. If you have credit cards, whatever, you have credit lines, you have equity in your own house, then you can go after the rehab, rehab, rehab retail deals and the wholesale deals, right? Yeah. Because you have money. Free and clear deals, I don't market to anymore. I don't market to free and clear. I don't do the equity uh, because um, I put a lot of, I had a bad experience with that because I put a lot of money into free and clear and we went about seven or eight months and I didn't buy any houses. So a free and clear deal for me is like, um, it's an add on, it's an extra. Well, you'll run into those anywhere. I mean, almost any marketing could bump into it. So just take it as a bonus when you hit them. Right. It's kind of like when I go to the restaurant in the morning and I order oatmeal, it's like, do I want to put walnuts in it or don't I? You know, it's kind of like, to me, it's like an extra. Well, my free and clear came from letters. It was just, it was just an accident. It's just, they're there. So anything can bump into one. So take it as a bonus. So the problem with free and clear houses is, is these people think that they've been paying into their savings account every single month for the last 30 years. And, and because they've been doing that and it was so hard for them to do, and it took them so long to do that they deserve top dollar. Yeah. So, or they just <coughs> want to take their savings passport down to the bank get their dough out and go do whatever they want to do. So mm -hmm. those deals are not harder to do, but they're harder to do, you know, because the, you have to get over those hurdles. Okay. Yeah. If so, they don't mind waiting for their money, it's not that bad. They want it all at once. It's rougher. The little one that I have, the guy is okay waiting for his money. So he got a little bit more and he waits for it. So it worked out. Yeah. I have a coaching client where, that I did a call with yesterday and it, that's exactly what happened. You know, he owns a limousine business and, you know, he has the money and he's just looking to figure out, he doesn't need the chunk of dough for something. But on the other hand, you had a client one time that the husband was like, had cancer and needed an operation and they needed the money like right away. Sure. Well, it depends on what they need the money for. Yeah. My point is, is that <coughs> I wouldn't just choose that strategy alone. I would, I would make sure I had at least three campaigns put together or four campaigns put together and then do the frame clear. You know, do right. that as, a, as an add-on or like Pete said, just by virtue of the, the mail and the, and the different things that we're going to do, um, you'll find the frame clear anyways. Cause they're sure. Well, you can always ask, like you did once, beautiful job. The first deal we found together, uh, you're in any house talking to anybody. Before you leave, ask, do you know anybody else that's selling a house? Yeah, so the thing there is, is it doesn't have to be in a house. You could be on the phone with somebody. Oh yeah, sure. Any, anybody, anything. Anybody you're talking to, it's like, okay, so this, you know, you know anybody else that would want my services or has a house for sale or would you like a commission if I find them? You know, if I call them up and do a deal, would you? And, and most of the people say they don't want a commission. That's why I don't offer commissions like I used to. Yeah. Because they don't want it. You know, somebody, <clears throat> you know, like a kid trying to convince their mom and dad or grandparents. Yeah, that, that's a different story. But most people don't want money. In um, fact, what we were doing for a while is we were giving away like meals and stuff like that because most people, they just want to be recognized, but they don't want money because they think that they're taking away from, they think that the person they're recommending is paying for it in your price. So they don't, right. want, they don't want that to be, you know, so if I offer somebody a thousand dollars, they think that it's coming out of the deal and it's a thousand dollars less than I'm going to offer the seller and they don't want to do that. Yeah. You got to squeeze it out. Some. So the first thing, we should ask people is if they have a house for sale. And yep. the last thing we should ask is if they know someone else that has a house for sale, yep. roughly speaking. Yep. yep. Not bad. Yeah. One of these days we're going to write it like a model offer, like everything that has to be within an offer. Yeah. You know, like you have to, you have to start it this way, then you do whatever, and then you have to end it this way. Right. And one of these days I'm going to get around to that. Like, what is the model offer? Like how, how do you set the offer up and then you do whatever. And then how do you end it? Well, that's a $26,000 question. I mean, we don't always say that. You don't always say that. But that one day, we were in a house, you said it to that guy, and it was a $26,000 profit for yep. us just by asking that question. So that's a damn good question. Yep. All right, good. 
So we're going to check out here. So I would like for as many listeners as possible, I should have said this at the beginning of the show, is uh, if you're listening to this podcast, please, please, please give us a review. Also, um, subscribe to us so that when we're, when we are, um, <clears throat> when we're uh, putting our new podcast up, you get it. So go subscribe to us, Flipping Houses for Rookies um, podcast. Uh, hit the subscribe button and uh, make sure that uh, you're part of our group. Okay. And you get these, these messages. Also, uh, there's some new things on flipping houses for rookies.com. So you should go check them out. Uh, we're actually giving away right now uh, a course that has all the videos and a bunch of bonus videos on the seven different deal structures. So if you go to flipping houses for rookies.com, uh, scroll down. Uh, you probably see it right away, but there's a, a girl there holding money to the left of that. Just put your name and uh, name and email address in there and I'll give you lifetime access to the course. Okay. For free. It doesn't cost anything. So go check that out. And uh, everything we talked about today, all the deal structuring and all that will be right inside that course. Okay. So Pete. Yo, Bill. It's going to be the way we're going to do. Well, we're going to try to go back to doing something on Facebook, but this is the way we're going to be doing our podcast for a few weeks until all this virus stuff ends, which I hope will be sooner than later, but I don't have uh, big, big aspirations about how soon. So, Well, hang on, Mr. Hawthorne. I thought you wanted to go to Florida and do a shared screen podcast, huh? I do. I do. You got but your dream not come on, true. Not under, these, not under these circumstances. I asked my sister well, today. I said, we got to go out and drive. We've been driving around looking at apartment buildings. I have a couple that I have to call on today. And uh, now she's telling me we can't even do that because the governor locked us down. So we can't, we only, can only leave for essential, essential uh, chores. Yeah. Essential chores. No, we can't leave chores. unless it's essential chores. Yeah. Whatever. Well, hey, Bill, next year, every apartment building is a grocery store or a cigar store. There you go. There you go. Actually, because because my schedule's lighting up, I was talking to Emma earlier. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up uh, the next couple of weeks. I'm going to do uh, coach a coaching hour where people can, for like you know, twenty or thirty bucks, can pay to get in and actually do a coaching call. You know, I get you know how much I get for coaching. I get hundreds and hundreds, yeah. hundreds of dollars yeah. for coaching. Actually, thousands of dollars to coach. And uh, I'm going to open it up just because everybody's home you know, the virus, and I'm going to just kind of get, you know, people are bored, so it's like, why not talk real estate? Which reminds me, um, if you're on my email address, uh, email list, one of the things I did a few weeks ago is I created a WhatsApp group called uh, Let's Talk Real Estate. And I think we've got, I don't know, upwards of 60 or 70 people in there, and they're all helping one another do deals. So <clears throat> if you're on my email list, uh, you'll get those, you'll get those emails. Or send me a support ticket, and I'll make sure you get uh, the way that you can log into that. It's free and it's just, let's talk real estate. And then, like I said, it's probably 60 or 70 people. I don't know how many people at this point. And my phone dings all day long. They're all talking to one another, chatting about the deals they're doing and help they need and all that kind of stuff. So it's yeah. really, so you could do that too. Okay. All right, Pete, I'm going to end the call. Thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, all the patience trying to get the technology done that we, that we worked on. We ended up doing a zoom call, which was easy, but uh, next week we'll have a few things figured out. We'll make it a lot easier. Okay. okay. All right, brother. Thank you. Okay. Enjoy your day. See you, everyone. All right, bye. Thanks for tuning in to the hottest real estate topics on the planet with Bill and Pete. If you want to continue learning how to buy and sell real estate without money or credit, head over to FlippingHouses.club for some cutting-edge real estate wealth tools. Or contact us at info at FlippingHouses.club.